I've documented the craziest Minecraft moments to ever happen over the last decade, such as the rare seeds, greatest accomplishments, and most elaborate inventions. So today, I narrowed years of these game-breaking highlights and events down into just the best ones, starting in 2009, where the first ever flying exploits was discovered. When the initial version of the game was launched, there was a feature that allowed you to save your position with R and teleport back to that position with Enter. By repeatedly spamming and resetting these save points while jumping in the air, you could use it to fly to the world's sky limit where you'd get stuck and have to manually crash your game to escape. Now the only thing better than flying glitches are duplication glitches, and in 2009 during the infdev version of the game we would historically see the first one ever discovered. By building a small 2x1 hole with a 2x2 wall beside it and throwing whatever item you want to duplicate right on the corner of the wall, the last item dropped into the hole will magically become infinite allowing you to use it as much as you wanted. Now because of Minecraft being so bare bones in 2009, these glitches and builds were really the only high highlights, but going into 2010, we would start to see history being made. A player by the name of Imported Socks came across this gigantic monolith that generated mysteriously while playing on a survival world. It looked as if a chunk of the world was just raised up to the 128 block sky limit, which left a hollowed out pit of water on the inside. Monoliths like this were only generated due to extremely rare circumstances while the terrain was processing, but this is just the start of 2010's best moments. Because that same year, possibly the most historic Minecraft feature to ever exist was discovered, the Far Lands. Located 12 million blocks away from spawn, in old versions of Minecraft you could find the most insane world generation glitch in the game's history. This ant maze looking terrain acted as the world borders we have today, but what most people don't realize is the Far Lands don't just end at 12 million blocks. Throughout the years, people like Ant Venom have pushed Minecraft world generation limits to see secrets way past the Far Lands, one of which can be found 25 million blocks below bedrock, where you can find a similar looking world generation anomaly, where there's just a bunch of these extremely surreal and man-made looking caves everywhere inside. Minecraft's best moments weren't just limited to terrain generation though, because back in 2010, players figured out multiple ways to fly using pigs. One way was to repeatedly reel in a pig with a fishing rod, which would bypass Isaac Newton's laws of gravity, but the success rate wasn't so high. Spamming snowballs at it over and over again though, and now you got yourself a working rig. This alpha version was also around the time that Notch decided to add in the nether to the game, and while developing the portals, he accidentally left in a very very funny feature. By simply pressing F4, you could literally spawn in nether portals out of thin air. And some players who found this on Reddit even contested each other who could make the most insane structure using this glitch. And, and you know what? I'll, I'll even give this one a go. Perfect. Bruh. Now, going into 2011, during the beta phase of the game, we would finally start to see more features leading to the community making history, such as simulating a live webcam in Minecraft. User Nate Viniconis coded a building program that would create blocks matching the exact color and location of what was in front of his camera in real time. From doing the Mr. Beast pose, capturing himself juggling, and even simulating his cat going crazy, this is definitely the best moment of its time, but we're still only at the beginning. Built by the internet for the win, this is the first ever Minecraft Red stone computer. Built up of several intricate wires and memory programs, this ancient CPU is able to do simple mathematics such as addition, subtraction, and the Fibonacci sequence. But the craziest part about it is that it was also made completely in survival mode since creative didn't even exist yet. As you can see, he said, hmm, let me make my block of choice dirt. The community didn't stop pushing the newly added redstone there though, because just a few months later, players would discover probably the most overpowered and cool looking duplication glitches seen to this day. By just connecting a fast redstone clock to two sticky pistons, powering them, and then placing a block in between. The block will be duplicated infinitely, basically printing money out of thin air! Wait, Sip, don't you think that many diamonds could maybe cause some bad inflation? What is inflation? Bruh. Now during the start of 2012 and going into 2013, we would finally start to see Minecraft boom in popularity with every single update. Millions of players started to flock in, insane Minecon events were hosted, and hundreds of YouTubers that made people's childhoods began making videos. This whole period just had so many highlights as it was the golden age of Minecraft, but probably the most notable of them all was later on in 2014, when the Danish government decided to create a one-to-one -one scale replica of their entire country, coming in at over 4 trillion blocks and more than a terabyte of data, this server is exactly what you'd find in Denmark but in Minecraft. It was meant to act as a cool experience for residents to see and build onto their houses in the game, but they made a huge mistake. They disabled players from placing TNT, but they completely forgot to disable TNT minecarts. As soon as this was discovered, Americans flocked to the server to grief every single build that they could find, blowing up houses to place tanks and flags all over the innocent ruins. This led to a Denmark national emergency 
as they shut down the server with the intention of never opening it up again. Following that interesting moment, in 2015, seed finding started to gain some popularity as we could see players discovering new rarities. One of which being a village house on this 1.8 seed that generated almost all the way up at Sky Limit, which has its foundation stretching over 150 blocks tall to the ground. Skyscrapers would generate like this because either a house somehow spawned on top of a floating island and the code said, no, you need to be on the ground. Or it's simply just the alpha of the village at work asserting dominance. However, that wasn't the only seed, as this one found by the Punslinger goes against all laws of Minecraft. Every single sheep herd you find on this seed will always have a pink sheep a part of it, despite the 1 in 642 chance of them actually spawning. Staying on the topic of world gen, in 2016, repeating seeds were discovered, which could be considered the greatest terrain generation bug of all time. With a 1 in 140 trillion chance of coming across when randomly, repeating seeds are a phenomenon where a feature of a Minecraft world is repeated over and over again all the way to the world borders. From infinite mine shafts, a line of diamond doors stretching on forever, and even this infinitely generating lava ravine, which has to be one of the coolest seeds that has ever been found. But there's still one feature of a Minecraft world that has been the same for the game's entire history, bedrock. While players have found various bedrock breaking exploits throughout the years, none of them come close to Psycraft's extremely fast bedrock breaking machine. In 2017, members of this Minecraft server invented a flying machine that uses TNT, a headless piston exploit, and extremely precise timing to confuse the game into removing bedrock. The main goal of doing this was not just to break the game, but also make history by creating a 1 million block recreation of Skyblock. Now, this invention right here would mark the beginning of breaking Minecraft, as all of the years prior, technical Minecraft wasn't taken very seriously. But going into 2018, the community started to push Minecraft to its absolute limits with new discoveries and techniques. One group of players figured out how to manipulate Minecraft's RNG to control things such as turning on and off the weather, causing hundreds of more mobs to spawn than usual, and even making it so every time you would mine an ore with a fortune pickaxe, you would get the maximum amount of drops. This discovery would spark some of the craziest Minecraft inventions to ever be made, such as Prototech's lightning farm, which manipulates not only the weather, but hundreds of skeleton horsemen into spawning every single minute. Now, if that wasn't doing the impossible already, once again on the Prototech SMP, players invented an Ender Dragon farm, which is one of the most overpowered farms to this day. Showcased by Ray's works, this farm repeatedly resummons the Ender Dragon and uses pistons to push it into a single TNT blast chamber. While doing so, the player is also loading in and out of chunks, which somehow manipulates the game into dropping maximum XP every single time the dragon dies. The XP will then flow to the player in the minecarts, gaining around 6 million points per hour without even moving a single muscle. So now, players have completely revolutionized RNG and XP farming, but what about mining? Well, this is the super quarry, the most efficient mining method ever created on the Psycraft server. It's a giant moving slimestone machine which takes blocks that are in its path and automatically removes them with the use of TNT dupers. Overall, it can clear out over 400 to 1,000 blocks an hour, leaving this absolute wasteland of a perimeter. This would be one of the last major technological milestones of 2018, and just looking at the game's highlights going from random alpha bugs found in our survival world to intentionally breaking the game is honestly kind of nostalgic. Alright, so now, let's fast forward to 2020 when we would see some of Minecraft's glitchiest moments in history. During snapshot 20w13a, a player discovered that if you simply die inside of this version, you will be put into spectator mode and survival mode at the same time. But the weirdest part is, is that you can punch yourself to death, and upon being killed, you will become stuck in this third person state forever, almost as if you've entered the fourth dimension. Now, if that wasn't already a Mojang bra yeah. moment, in the exact snapshot right after this one, Striders turned into the most overpowered mob in the entire game. If you were to ride a Strider up against a wall, it would suddenly start going Mach 5 through the nether. Not only did they go fast, but if you reeled one in with a fishing rod from above, then mounted onto its midair, the strider would start to fly and you'll actually be able to pilot it. It was also in 2020 where this very strange one-third end portal was discovered. Now, every single end portal has a 1 in 1 trillion chance of generating with each eye of ender in place, which one on this seed did. But it also happened to generate right on a chunk border, which glitched the portal into activating only one-third of it, which I didn't even think was possible. Staying on the topic of world generation findings, in 2021, Matthew Boland discovered something that would change the way humans played Minecraft forever. Being able to find diamonds just by using a swamp clay patch. Quickly spreading across the entire community, no SMP was safe from players logging on and being full diamond within minutes. I even got banned once from this guy's SMP just because he thought McYum and I were x ray just because he didn't know about the strats. Similar to this, you could use lap 
Lapis and other world features to locate the diamonds, and it wasn't a surprise that Mojang immediately patched this in the next update. Matthew Bullen says it might be possible that fire patches in the nether could be used to find ancient debris, and if discovered, could be so powerful the world would never be the same. Continuing on with 2021's highlights, we would also see the historic rise of artificial intelligence in Minecraft. While people like Teco Technicia have designed sophisticated baritone bots to complete the steps of beating the game, organizations like Minerel went further, creating a human brain in the world of Minecraft that learns different behaviors based off of punishments and rewards. For example, they started off by putting these groups of robots into a new world with no prior knowledge of the game at all, as if a human was thrown onto Earth for the first time. The robots were then given points based on the type of blocks they mined, so as time went on, these robots learned what blocks give more points like diamonds and what blocks to avoid mining all from their own judgments. Although this is still very much in the works, with how much AI has improved recently, I can definitely see it changing Minecraft very soon. 2021 also happened to be the year of peak seed finding. From players cracking the original hero brand seed to play on, finding the biggest cactus ever coming in at 23 blocks tall, and even a seed that has everything you need to beat the game just in the spawn chunk, it's clear there truly isn't a limit of discoveries in this game. Around the same time, players also showed that there isn't a limit to mob farms either, because the Hypnos Minecraft server created a contraption called EPS that produces 3.7 million hostile mobs an hour. By using a series of platforms and nether portals placed in this gigantic void perimeter, hostile mobs will spawn and instantly be teleported into the nether at an absurdly fast rate, where they are grouped together, executed, and their item drops are collected. The level of technology that went into this and even the decoration just around the contraption is definitely the pinnacle of mob farming. Okay, 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 let's take a quick second away from all these dramatic moments and insane technologies and appreciate the most realistic Minecraft texture pack ever made. Released in 2021, these textures covering every single block in the game costed me a whole $40, but the amount of detail the blocks and atmosphere on this texture pack has definitely makes it worth it since it's just so calming. Sometimes it's just nice to get away from the wife and yeah. Oh, hold on guys, my PC is kind of getting loud right now. Oh. Alright, so as we go into 2022, the best moments at this point become greater than any in history due to discoveries, competitiveness, and new features. Starting in April, where for the first time ever, players figured out how to become immortal in survival Minecraft. During my best player simulate civilization events, one of the three teams had engineered stasis chambers for an upcoming war which would use ender pearls to teleport them back to their base if they were ever in danger. But the craziest part is that they use an update suppressor to manipulate the stasis chambers into teleporting them back automatically when it detected there were no more totems in their inventory. With this, they won the war by repeatedly fighting the other team, teleporting back after running out of totems, getting more totems at base, and then going back to fighting. But this wasn't the first time players in my events pushed limits. Because during my 24-hour redstone competition, the geniuses participating built some of the best Minecraft inventions I've ever seen. One of the players, Mythical Pingu, had created a gigantic slimestone tank which could move around while shooting off TNT and even being equipped with a giant giant nuke on top. There was also Cubic Meter who had created a wither farm. This was done by loading an arrow into a blast chamber at the top of this tower while igniting hundreds of TNT, which would shoot the arrow down so quickly it would one shot the wither right before another one was created. Now, all of these inventions and other highlights shown throughout this video are impressive, but in my personal opinion, I still think there's one moment that tops every single thing mentioned in this video. The day unobtainable items like bedrock, end portal frames, and barriers were obtained for the first time in survival Minecraft. On June 27th, 2022, all of the people on screen right now discovered the Fallen Block exploit, which is described as one of the greatest exploits in the entirety of gaming history. By using extremely intricate redstone machinery and combining the binary codes of different blocks such as water, sand, and anvils, these players were somehow able to generate entirely new items out of thin air such as command blocks, end portal frames, and spawners, which when broken will actually drop the item for the player to use. And now we're in 2023 and things have gone so extreme and complicated. Sometimes I wish I could just go back in time to when things were simple. Huh? Wait, wh wh where am I? Ta tax fraud? F $54 million all being laundered with the car wash? Albuquerque, New I, I know nothing about Albuquerque, New Mexico. I, th I think I need a lawyer. I, I think I need a lawyer, please.